various parts of the world to gather ourselves together to not only to pray, but to magnify your name and then also to study to show ourselves approved unto you. Now, Father, we bless you even now, Father, because when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And not only do the blessings come down, but the blesser of blessings, the giver of blessing comes down and abides among us in the name of Jesus. And so, God, we want your presence, God, and we want you in the midst of us even now, God. So, Father, Lord, come the more and have your way even now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. We want you to feel free to move afresh among us, God, and fall afresh on us even now in the name of Jesus to come and have your way, God, to uproot everything that's unlike you, Lord, to cast the devil out of the minds of your people. People, God, because we need your help. If the devil have us distracted, God, we won't be able to focus in on you, God. If we're looking to the devil, God, instead of looking to you, God, we won't have the peace that we need, the joy that we need, the hope that we need, God, the reassurance that we need, God, that everything is going to be all right. And so as David said, I believe, we're looking unto the hills from whence cometh our help on this day, because we know without a shadow of a doubt that our help cometh from the Lord. And since you are God Almighty, and since there is no God that's like you, you are magnificent in all your ways and glorious in all your ways, we bless your name now. Now, God, allow your presence to be among us, O God, on tonight. In the name of Jesus, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are my strength, you are our strength, and you are definitely our Redeemer. And so, God, get the glory even now. Move those things that will cause the seed to be destroyed, O God. We want the seed to be planted to tonight in good soil that it may blossom into a harvest that we won't have enough room to receive. We need to hear because your word gives us life and not just life, but life that more abundantly. So bless those that are joining us on freeconferencecall.com and also bless those that are joining us on our live stream on Facebook Live. And then God, last but not least, bless those that take time to check it out again and go back and follow after the, the Bible study, God, so that they can glean even more, God, and that you would be their God and that you would be their keeper and that, God, your word would be the lamp that they need in these dark and dreary word times, God. And so, God, have your way, God, even now. Fall afresh on us and bless us even now and let your spirit have his way so that he can hide your word in our hearts so that we might not sin against thee. We thank you and we bless your name even now for it's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray. We say thank God, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you all and good evening and thank you for taking time out to join us here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ as we begin our new series on the book of Psalm. Um, Lady O talked about it last week. I want to encourage you to go back and tune in again uh, to, to go over the introduction of Psalms that she laid out. Remember that Psalm um, has five books in it. I said the book of Psalm, but it has five books. It does not have 150 books. It does not have 150 chapters. chapters. It does not have 150 divisions, but it's broken up into different thoughts, uh, songs, uh, worship experiences that comes from the heart of the writers. And it's also a book that, uh, uh, it's a writing that encompasses uh, passages or songs or uh, worship experiences from throughout the Bible. All right. It's just not one single author, um, but it's made up of many different authors. All right. And so tonight what we're going to focus on, uh, we're, we have 16 Psalms that we will be discussing over the rest of the year. 16 Psalms, all right? And tonight we will be working on Psalm 146. Psalm 146. So come on, join in with me um, as we go to Psalm 146 and we'll read the Bible together. All right, so blessings to you, uh, Missionary Miller, Minister Meeks, Sister Graham, Mother McCowan, um, Sister Lewis joined us. Oh, good God Almighty, she must have ran straight home from work and jumped right on her computer. And, and Mother Green, <laughs> blessings to you, ma'am. Thank you for joining us tonight. All right, so um, Psalm 146. 146, it contains uh, 10 verses. Psalm 146 contains six, I mean, 10 verses. And you all should be able to see my screen. 
Uh, for those that are on freeconferencecall.com, the title of this lesson from our, our, our Bible study series is Praise the Lord. How many all know what is a different phrase for praise the Lord? What's a different phrase that we can use for praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it right there. So anytime you see the word praise ye the Lord, they're saying, say hallelujah. Say, just give God the highest praise. So it is, um, okay, it is the highest praise that you can give unto God. Praise ye the Lord. And so let's go into it. Psalm 146, verses 1 through 10. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth in that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God. Verse number six, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever. Verse number seven, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. Uh, the Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. So as we begin to go and I messed up not going as we begin to go into this psalm it's in it's things i want you to note we already have identified that praise ye the lord means hallelujah praise the lord you can say hallelujah and you're saying praise the lord it starts with praise ye the lord it ends with praise ye the lord why do you all think it's important for us to begin and end with praises to god why is it important All right, a way of acknowledging him, Minister Meeks. Uh, if you look back uh, 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 on the Lord's Prayer, it's, it starts out, you know, honoring God uh, immediately. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, just honoring God. Okay, anyone else? All right, I, I liken it to this. Everything should begin... I said begin. Oh man, I must be getting old. I put a D on begin. I'm so sorry. Everything should begin and end with God. Everything in our lives should be begin and end with him. When you rise up in the morning, you should give him thanks because you're not guaranteed to be able to see the day. But when you lay your head down to sleep at nighttime before the day is yet done, you should also give him gratitude because he is the one that is that started you in the day and he's the one that kept you all day long. We all know that he is Alpha and Omega. That means he is the beginning and the end. When there was nothing, there was something. There was someone and that was God. It told, tells us in Genesis 1, in the beginning, um, God made the heaven and the earth. The earth was without void. It was full of darkness and God, and there was darkness upon the face of the deep. And God spoke something out of nothing. But the, the Bible also tells us that heaven and earth shall pass away. So the things that God spoke into existence, there is going to come a day in time where they will be no more. And when they are no more, guess who will still be? God will still be. So no matter what you go into, no matter what comes your way, if you make God your priority when you start it and you make God your priority as you end it, God can't help you but to bless you in the middle. Because if your mind is on him to start and your mind is on him on the end, that means that you've kept your mind stayed on him. And according to Isaiah, it tells us if we keep our mind, Isaiah 26 and 3, if we keep our mind stayed on him, he'll keep us in perfect peace. But our minds have to be stayed 
stayed on him. And the more that we keep our minds focused in on God, the more I mean, the less likely it is that we'll become distracted by the different tricks that the enemy sets. He comes in to steal, kill, and destroy so that he can keep us from keep from he can stop us or hinder us from keeping focus in on God. All right. So this author decided that he was going to begin his 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 offering because this is what this is. The Psalms are offerings unto God. They're points of intimacy. So that they can be intimate with God. Lady Yo talked about it last week on how there's different psalms uh, and there are different um, ways that they approach God. All right. Some cry. Some even were weary. Some were heavy laden. But in the midst of their harm or in the midst of their trials and in the midst of their afflictions, they were able to muster up a praise and acknowledge that though, though God may slay me. I'm still going to trust him. Though I may be going through the fire, God, I still believe that you, you're the one that allowed me to go in it. And because you're the one that allowed me to go in it, you're also the one that can bring me out as well. And so if we, if we can just make sure that we, we base our lives off of this template, then everything in between has to work together for our good. It has to. Because the Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 6 and 33, but seek ye first who? the kingdom of God and not just the kingdom of God, but his righteousness as well. Go back to the Lord's Prayer. Minister Week Meeks talked about the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Those are things that we want God's kingdom to come and have his way. And when you are the king, that means that you reign eternal or you reign over something that's below you. That means that you are the author or you're the one that is in control. So if we want God's kingdom to come and his will to be done and we want to seek his righteousness God, and, his, and his kingdom, we, that means we're telling God, God, we want you to sit on the throne of our hearts, sit on the throne of our lives. And then that means that God is in control. And is, I don't want to say control because we already know he's in control. But the word I want you all to catch is that he's responsible for everything that's in the middle. If God is the bread, the top of the bread and the bottom of the bread, nobody just go grab bread that's just sitting on the counter. Who goes and picks up bread that somebody left on the counter? No, when you start the sandwich, you take ownership of the sandwich, right? When you, when you begin to make the sandwich, you say, okay, this is what I'm going to put in the sandwich. I, I'm ready to go eat. So if we say, God, you're the, you're the sandwich, you're the bread of my life, then I mean God has to meet the needs. He has to put the pieces together, all right? Sometimes I don't like just one slice of ham if it's on my sandwich uh, because I, I, want to, I don't want to taste more bread than meat. So I, I, I put more stuff in there, but guess what, you all? The more meat that I require or the more meat that I desire meant that something had to die for that meat to, to, for it to get on my sandwich, so, so, so sometimes that means that we've got to go through some things in our lives and it's not always easy, but it's working together. It's working together and it's making a story that's not all the same. Uh, I, 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 the other day, before uh, I think um, before we really came to the conclusion of not being able to go, actually it was in the middle. Um, we had a district meeting and I'm, I'm very safe. I don't take chances on what I eat because I believe food is precious and I want to enjoy every meal that I get. I don't want to experiment. I don't want to have to spit anything out saying that's nasty. I don't have time to experiment. If I'm not sure that it's going to be good, I don't want it. But I picked up a sandwich and the sandwich had three meats on there. Now, I don't do three meats. I like ham. Just give me my ham and cheese. I don't like a whole bunch of stuff on there. If I got some beef, I, I just give me some roast beef, but it can't be roasty, roasty, like raw looking roast beef. I'm really picky. But this sandwich had three meats on there and it was the greatest thing in the world. I tried it. I said, let me go ahead and bite into this. I'm a little hungry. Let me bite into it. And I went back and told the hospitality lady, I said, that sandwich was great. But again, it took some work to be able to get that sandwich together. And I know I used an example of saying, but that one I'm trying to get you all to understand is that God are, it makes the pieces of our lives work together. He don't put horseradish on there if you don't like horseradish. 
I mean, he, he, he wants the things that you want to benefit you, to strengthen you, to encourage you. Now, it may, now, now, sometimes we may have to get an onion here and there. Sometimes we have to go through some afflictions because the Bible did say in this life we shall have what, you all? We shall have tribulation. It's a guarantee. So that means that we're going to have some things that we don't like in the midst of our things. All right. But God's going to work them together. And God works all of it together for our good. And so the beginning of this and the ending of this psalm identifies that praise should be our focus. All right. Praise should be our focus. So let's look at these. I want you all to capture three things from these scriptures. I want you to capture three things from these scriptures. The first thing I want you to capture is to receive God's blessings. You've got to make up in your mind to praise him. You've got to always praise him to receive God's blessings. Because the blessings of God, the Bible tells us, are yea and amen for us. The promises of God, they're yea and amen. So why do we choose to live beneath our blessings or our favor by allowing doubt to come in, by allowing fear to come in? Those cause us to live beneath our privilege, all right? Even in the midst of affliction and trials, God says uh, that he's going to work them together for our good. He also tells us that he would never leave us nor ever forsake us. He's given us promises that even when we go through we have some assurity that it's going to work together for our good. Uh, I, I liken it to um, the Hebrew boys. It didn't say that Jesus was in the fire before they got in the fire. Because when they looked into the fiery furnace, it was just heat and fire. Or else somebody would have said, hey, you know, there's somebody in the fire. But when they were thrown into the fire, the next time they looked, they didn't see just three people. They saw four people. So in your most darkest moment, in your most biggest trial, at the moment when it looks like all hope is gone, that's all you got to do is look around. Start looking around. God, where are you at? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing you, God, but I need to see you in the midst of it. And if you can get your eyes focused in on God, then God said, I will bring you through and I will bring you out and you will have this peace. In the midst of a fiery furnace situation where everyone else is looking for you to be destroyed. Have you ever dealt with a situation where you have people looking to find out if you've been consumed or if you're frustrated or if you're mad and they come around want to see if they got on your nerves and they frustrated to the point and you come back looking like you uh, like you happy and ain't nothing happened and then they mad all by themselves? Yeah, I've been dealing with different situations like that because the enemy, he wants to steal your joy. The enemy, he wants to steal your focus. The enemy, he wants to seal your peace uh, that, that, he, that he did not give. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy the things that God has blessed you with. And anytime you allow him to do that, it causes you to live beneath your privilege. You are a chosen generation. Tell yourself that. I'm chosen. You are a peculiar people. Tell you, I'm peculiar. That means I'm different. I'm not like everyone else. I see diff everybody different on here. All right? Uh, Sister Graham got on some, some blue grasses, some glasses. She coordinating. She coordinating. Uh, Mother McCowan got some uh, glittery stuff in the background. Look like the little things that you put up decorations on the wall. All right? I see plants. And back at Sister Lewis' place. I see a fan that's not spinning. And I know Mother Green's probably going to be hot, so that fan's probably going to be spinning sometime soon. Uh, 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 but she, oh, she said, no, no fan, all right. You see curtains behind mine, all right. So we all are different. We're peculiar. So that means that we shouldn't expect everyone to be like us, all right. Everyone can't be like you. Everyone can't go through the things that you go through, but we have a God that can bring us through those different situations, God is able to bring us through. God is able to bring us over. And we've got to understand we don't want to live beneath who we are. We are chosen. We're royalty. We're peculiar. And then God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He did that because he wants us to receive the blessings of God. Sin causes us. Sin causes us to lose out on what God has in store for us. We like to declare wrong, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11, but if we know that God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us, 
thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end, why do we fret when we get a bill that we don't like? Why do we become frustrated or, 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 or we come on crying when we receive a report from the doctor that we don't agree with? Uh, why do we become overwhelmed um, by the things that we see going on in the world? Uh, those things are going on because God's will at the end of the day has to be done. And so we can't allow what we see to cause us to become fearful or fretful or discouraged. That's why we as people of God, we must walk by faith and not by sight. It is because God wants to get the glory. I done went into teaching a little bit more. So the first thing I want you all to get, and I'm going to go through it, um, verses 1 through 2. To receive God's blessings, you got to praise him. And I don't have this broken out like this, so I don't, I'm not going to go further on the screen. All right, the next thing that you need to know um, is uh, to receive God's blessings, we've got to trust him. So we got to praise him and we have to trust him. That's, that's what these scriptures are going to tell us. Verses 1 through 2 reminds us to praise him. Verses 3 through 4 tells us that we've got to trust him. All right, and then verses 5 through 10, uh, it tells us, it, it, it shows us the results of praising and trusting him. 1 through 2 tell, urges us to praise him. Verses 3 through 4 tells us that we should trust him. And then verses 5 through 10 shows us the results of, of what happens when we praise God and we trust him for the things that we need. All right, let's dig into this a little bit. Praise. I want you to write down praise. When you say praise ye the Lord, it's hallelujah. So when we say hallelujah, we're telling God we praise you. We magnify you. We're giving you glory. We're giving you honor. And we're giving you the praise. That's what we're telling God. That you are our primary focus. And you're the reason why we live and move and have our very being. We understand that life comes from him. Um, I want you all, I want some interaction tonight, so get ready to unmute your mic. What are, what are different forms of praise? Do we all have to praise the same? All right, I see head shaking. We all don't have to praise the same. Um, because I can give you examples of different praises. Uh, but I want you give me give me uh, give me some praises. Give me some examples of praises. Well, we did say shout hallelujah. All right, hallelujah, Sister Ground, Minister Meeks. Clapping your hands. Clapping a hand is a praise. Come on, give me some more. And I see Sister Lewis saying lifting up hands, waving hands. If I can just raise my hands, uh, that'll be enough. Mother McCowan. Raise hands, okay? Someone else? Dancing. Dancing is a form of praise. Anyone else? Music is a form of praise. Yes. So we have various different ways of praise. Um, Lady Yo does a worship song. Um, um, I forgot. It's clap, uh, wave, dance before the Lord. Um, so there's various different forms. Um, Mother Green can give you a, a hallelujah that'll rattle the entire building. Mother Green be upstairs. She upstairs praying on, on Fridays, and we, it's like we're sitting up in there with her. Mother Green, she has the whole church filled up, and I'll be running around, walking around the building like Mother Green is right inside the sanctuary with me. All right, thank you, uh, Brother Graham. Uh, uh, singing, and then Brother Pyle gave us lifting your voice. So, so when they say, let everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, that what they're encouraging you is whatever you feel is your best praise. Give it to God. Give him your glory. Give him your, if, if your arm is hurting, I dare you to lift that arm up and give God a wave offering. What you're telling God is that God is more important than the pain that you're dealing with. And I'm willing to make that sacrifice to let you know uh, that you are worthy of my praise. I do this. I told you all recently um, that I've been doing, I've been walking a lot. I've been walking a whole bunch. And so I walk, jog uh, anywhere between two and a half to three and a miles, three and a half miles every day. But as, the, as I've been doing it, the more uh, I, I, I've had some pains in my knee. 
And so it, it's because of wear and tear. But you all know what? I have not missed a day working out. I've continued to press forward and do the things because I have a desire to continue to uh, remain healthy. I have a desire to continue to meet my day-to-day -day goals. What would happen if we wouldn't allow <clears throat> anything to separate us from the love of God? What would happen if we wouldn't allow frustration to get in the way, anger to get in the way, things that are going on in our lives to get in the way of blessing God? What would happen if we made God really our primary and our, um, our, our primary focus in everything that we deal with in life? What that will do is it will change our, our, our persona. It will change our ambiance. It would change the way we carry ourselves because we would always have a mind to bless God. And anytime we bless God, the word of God says he comes in to do what, you all? He comes in to inhabit the praises of his people. So when I praise him, God comes and rests in the midst of me. So no matter where I may go, I can worship God and praise him in the midst of wherever I'm at. In a dire situation, come on, God, I need your help. Oh, God, I magnify you. I bless you. I glorify you. For people around you may think that you're crazy, but I would rather have someone think that I'm crazy than not have the presence of God with me. Wasn't that what David did? David made himself sound crazy when he went among the Philistines. And little did they know, his enemies were taking care of him. David was killing Philistines left and right. And that's all he did is act like he was a crazy, but he, he, he continued to bless the God of his salvation. And he made his enemies his what, God, you all? His footstool. Because God, David did not have a problem inviting God to wherever he went. When, he, when, this, uh, when they had just came from the battle and uh, David's wives and every man's wives and children were taken away, they spake of stoning him. But David did what? David encouraged himself in the midst of the issue, began to make God his priority and said, God, where do you want me to go? He didn't consult his men. He didn't consult anyone else. He went directly to God in the most dire uh, situation of his life and God gave him an answer and God gave him instruction. But seek ye first. I got to keep saying that. That's my favorite scripture now because if I seek God first and make him my priority, then God's going to add. Guess what you all? God's been blessing in during this coronavirus because God has been the priority. And since God has been the priority, even though lack and destruction is all around us. Praise Center is still yet growing. We're still yet reaching people. God is still blessing us above and beyond what we can ask or think because we've kept God as the priority. We've kept God as the focus. And God prepared us so that we can soar. I don't know about you all, but I'm grateful that God made me to soar during this season. That doesn't mean that I haven't had to go through some heartaches and some pain. I've had to deal with some different situations. But God has taken us higher in our spiritual walk. God has taken us higher in our spiritual outlook. God has taken us higher in our focus in on him so that he can get the glory out of our lives during this season. I'm, I keep teaching and going. Come on, let's go into the scripture. Psalm 146, 1 through 2. All right, let's read, 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 read. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have my being. The first thing that I need us to know is I need, we should know that we should all praise the Lord. Praise is coming for all of us, not just for an individual. It shouldn't be just the pastor leading worship. It shouldn't just be the, the a minister of music or the worship leaders leading worship. But when it's time for us to gather to worship together, whether you sing high or you sing low, you sing off or you sing on key, it doesn't matter who you are. The Bible encourages us to let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Go with me. Come on. Uh, Miss, uh, uh, Mother Green, get Psalm 150. 56. Sister Lewis get Psalm 67 and 5. Mother McCowan get Psalm 33 and 1. Psalm 150 and 6. Psalm 67 and 5. Psalm 33 and 1. This part of the thing, the statement, he says, praise ye the Lord. 
He's making a direct statement. There is no misunderstanding. He's not saying praise your finances. He's not saying praise because everything is going good. He makes a definitive statement no matter what may be going on, God is worthy of the praise. And just in case you didn't know that he was talking to himself as well, he says praise ye, praise the Lord oh my soul. So I'm not just going to tell you to bless somebody, but I'm going to bless the Lord as well. You got to watch out for them people who don't do nothing during the whole service. I know I'm deviating, but let me put this out there. That don't do nothing when the whole service, but as soon as it's their time to get on the mic or they stand before people, then they want to shout. They want everybody to run around, but they haven't been doing anything the whole time. I'm a worshiper. So as soon as the service starts, we standing up and we clapping and we ready to go because it's worship. We've come to not just sit. We don't come to be entertained, but we've come to magnify the God of our salvation. And God in the Bible says that where two or three are gathered in his name, there I would be in the midst. So if we if we know that God is willing to come in the midst, when I come here, I come with a mindset that I'm going to bless God to my fullest so that God's glory can reign on me so that I will not leave here the same. Even on these Wednesdays and on Fridays, every time I enter into the house of the Lord, I'm looking with an expectation that God's going to move, that God's going to fall afresh, and that God's going to get the glory because I made up in my mind that I'm going to praise him. Uh, elder uh, overseer Gabriel Hatcher came and talked to us about um, this is the place that praise evolves. He called our house that the praise center church of God in Christ was the place where praise evolves. Anytime some place evolves, that means that where it springs up. And we've got to allow the praises of God to spring up from the wells of our of our souls. Even if it's hurt, God, I still bless you. Though, though I may be afflicted, God, you're still yet worthy, God. Because it could have been a different way. It could have been even worse, God. I may have a limp, God, but at least I got a leg to limp on. Somebody don't have that leg. God, I thank you, God, today. I may not have all the money that I desire to have, but God, I got a roof over my head. God, I got clothes on my back. I got food on my table. Somehow, some way, I know that you're going to turn this around because you've been good to me. And not only have you been good to me, God, but you've been better to me than I've been to myself. I'm just thinking of the goodness of Jesus. Y'all excuse me for a moment because the songwriter said, or my former pastor said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Now I go to my former pastor, Pastor uh, 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 Superintendent Watkins. He said, when I think, I begin to thank. And when I thank, then I begin to think. Because when I think that God has made ways, and I remember all that he's done for me, how he's opened up doors, how he saved my soul, how he put food on the table, I can't help but to begin to worship him. And I can't help but to begin to magnify him. Then it takes me back into the cycle that I begin to think about something else that he's done. And then I begin to praise him. When you make up in your mind that I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, God will come in and shift your mindset, shift your atmosphere, shift whatever is going on because he'll take your mind off of your lack and he'll put your mind on him which is abundance and favor and blessings and all the things that we don't have enough room to receive. Praise ye the Lord. That's simply that's all that says. And so let's go into the scripture because I'm about to start reciting the scriptures. Come on, Mother Green, give me Psalm 150 and 6. All right, so it, it says if you're it says it says if you're breathing, you should praise the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're in the hospital, it doesn't matter if you're at a funeral. It doesn't matter if you are at the bank. You can praise God. It says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Guess what, you all? We're the only beings that don't do what God commands us to do. The animals still bless the God of their salvation. They still do what they're supposed to do. All right? They don't intermingle. They do what they're supposed to do. The birds chirp. Every single morning, they get up and chirp all morning long. The butterflies still fly. 
and that God still prepared, the, the, the plants still do what they're supposed to do. The sun still obeys God. It rises in the morning in the east and it sets itself in the west. The moon rises in the evening and sets itself. Everything that has breath still does what it's supposed to do, but we seem to find opportunities not to do what God commanded us to do. We've been made into the instrument of praise. He gave us hands to clap. He gave us hands to wave. He gave us feet to dance. He gave us mouths to bless him. He, and if you, you don't have to compare your worship to no one else. But what you got to do is give God your best. You have to give God your best. Offering him your best is the least that you can do because be considering that he's given us his best. God, all, God never gives us seconds. God never gives us leftovers. But every time he blesses us, he blesses us with stuff that is the first fruits or, or, or his best for us in our situation. Some things we don't need. So he don't give us more than we need or more than he can handle. But he gives us just what we need. And the more we thank God for the little, then that means that God can trust us with the much. I don't know about you. I'm grateful that God has shown me that little still become much when I place it in his hands. Little becomes much. So if I give God my little faith, God will turn my little faith into something greater. If I give God my little trust and God turns my little trust into something greater, that means that he can trust me the more. If, I can, if he can trust me to wake up every single morning and tell you thank you, then that means he can trust me uh, to thank him in the new day as well. If he can trust me for thanking him in the new day, then that means he'll know that I'm going to bless him when the sun goes down as well. When we begin to give God the little, then little becomes much when we place it in the master's hands. We just need to take time to appreciate God for the little. Stop lamenting over what you don't have. Stop worrying and fretting about what you lost. Anything that you lost, God has something better in store to replace it. God never does things the same way. He never takes what he gives you. He never takes what you give him and give it back to you the same way. But he presses it down he shakes it together, and God makes it to run over. God don't go by addition. God is an exponential God. He doesn't do things step by step. God does things already in, in, in light years in advance. So he knows what he has in store for you. He just wants you to trust him. And I'm getting ahead of myself. He just wants you to trust him. Come on, Sister Lewis. Give me Psalm 67 and 5. All right, there we go again. Let the people praise thee. It didn't say those that were the singers, because remember, they did have singers that were ordained to do the singing. They had people that were ordained to play the music. They had people that were in place to do part of the praise, but they encouraged them to let all the people praise thee. Not just those that are sitting on the high seat, not just those that are leading the worship, but God looks for all of us to praise him. Because God doesn't just, doesn't just want a few of us to be blessed, but he wants all of us to be blessed. And the more we praise him, the more we magnify him, the more we glorify him, the more God can get the glory out of our lives. Come on, Mother McCown, give me Psalm 33 and 1. Uh, there's me one to restore it. All right, I, 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 I used to recite that all the time, just praise is comely for the upright. I didn't know where it was at, but it would always be in my mind. What that means is praise is something that's special for those that are upright because what praise is due is praise is, it, uh, uh, it invites God to come into where you are at. So it's comely because it will come, it, it will bring the things that you need. It's, it's special. Praise is something special. It's intimacy between you and God. When you begin to praise him, you ain't got to worry about nobody else. You don't need music. You don't need nobody to touch you. No, 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 I'm okay, baby darling. Go and go somewhere. Let me just be in this little corner by myself because I'm having an intimate moment with God. It's something that brings in revival. Praise brings in renewal. Praise brings in a fresh anointing of fellowship. 
the presence of God. Oh, God, it's something special when you get into the midst of God. It's something special about being in the midst of God. So we all should praise God because God does things that blow our mind and he's worthy to be praised and he's worthy to be adored. Come on, let's keep going. Not only should we praise the Lord, not only will I praise the Lord, but it says in verse 2, it says, while I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have my being. So that takes me to my next point that praise is a choice. You can choose to bless God or you can choose not to bless him. You can choose to lift him up or you can choose not to lift him up. But if you choose not to lift him up, what you're doing is you're choosing not to experience the fullness of the presence of God. If you just invite him in, Hold on, let me get this scripture. Revelation 3 and 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will let me in, or if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him. That's not the version I want. King James, there we go. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and him with me. When we worship God, we invite him to come from the outside of the door. He said, I'm not going to force my way in. I'm not going to bully my way in. I'm not going to make you praise me. But if you invite me, I'm waiting for you just, just to invite me. I don't want to stand outside, but I want to come and sup with you and you can hang out with me. Do you know God wants to rest in the midst of us? And when God comes in and rests in the midst of us, he don't leave us the same way. He comes in to heal. He comes in to breathe life. He comes in to turn things around. He don't leave things the same way that they were when he came in. God is a perfectionist. He wants to see things well. He, he said, let there be. And he said, after he looked at it, he said, it is good. That's what he wants to do in your life. He wants to come and begin to speak things into existence in your life. But he said, I'm not going to force you to receive my blessings. I'm not going to force you to receive my favor. But if, I'm, if you hear me at the door, and God's calling at everyone's door. He's calling at your door, wherever you might be at now. And he says, bless me, praise me, and I will come in and show you the great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We should have a mind to praise him. And it's our choice. But you have to make up in your mind to do it. The author in the scripture says, "I will, while I live, I'm going to praise him. So he says, as long as I'm living, I'm going to continue to bless him, all right? And not only will I continue to bless him, but I will sing praises unto my God while I have my very being. There's going to come a time and a place where you're not going to be able to lift up your hands. And there's going to be a time where you're going to be able to, you're going to wish, I wish that I can lift up my hands. But while you can't lift up your hands, you should lift them up. God, I surrender to your will. God, I give you a wave offering. God, it's me that's standing in the need of prayer. You, it's going to come a time where you're not going to be able to walk and dance like you used to dance. I remember Bishop Thomas used to say, I can't kick, pick him up like I used to be able to pick him up. But he would pick him up however he could and maybe just up and down. But while you got the use and activity of your limbs, while you're able to move in your body, you should give God your very best and bless the God of your salvation and make his praises be continually in your mouth. You should give God your best because he's deserving of your best. Again, but you got to make up your mind to do that. We make up in our mind when we want to complain. We make up in our mind when we want to be frustrated. We make up in our minds when we want to slap somebody upside the head. We make up in our minds when we want to eye somebody because they cut us off on the road. And we make sure that we turn all the way around, not knowing that there's other stuff in front of us and we looking all the way over here to the right. Foolishness, we do some foolish. And you got to make up in your mind to do that. Here go another thing, and I dealt with this myself. You got to make up in your mind to frown. I'm one that used to frown and me mud all the time, but your natural face does not naturally frown. You've got to squint your head and make your muscles frown for you to have a frown. You've got to force yourself to do that, which means if you got to force yourself to do it, you can force yourself not to do it. You can force yourself to smile. You can
can force yourself to wave at somebody. Even if they don't like you, I still bless God for you. Uh, you may think that you hurt me, but what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Uh, God, thank you. You got to make up in your mind that I'm not going to settle for what the world is going to give me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hunger and thirst after righteousness for his name's sake. It's a choice, people of God. And when you make up in your mind that God is my priority and God is the most important thing in my life, then nothing else matters. No one else matters. It, it, it would just be between you and God. And God will bless you, and God will keep you, and God will sustain you. Come on, go with me. Um, uh, Sister Graham, get Romans 8, 35 and 37. Minister Meeks, get Philippians 4, 4 and 11. Romans 8, 35, through th 35 and 37, not 35 through 37, 35 and 37. And then Sister Graham, get Philippians 4, 4 and 11. Because I want to see it. All right, come on, uh, Minister Meeks. Uh, Romans? Yes. Or the Philippians? Romans. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Oh, wait, wait, who'd I give? What you got, Sister Graham? I have Romans 8. Sister Graham, go. Sister Graham, go. Okay. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Hold on. Stop. Stop. And ask a question. What? Who is better than your God? Who is more powerful than your God? Who is more awful, awesome than your God? So then he asks this question. Who shall do it? He, he asks a question. Come on, read. Who, who he asks? Who he want to know? Who shall, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution? Or As you keep reading, he's saying it sarcastically. Just keep going. He's like, really? Famine? Really? Make, come on, keep going. Naked? Okay, come on. So all of those things that usually would cause us to be fretful, fearful, overwhelmed, cast down, forsaken, he said those things don't mean jack. Not in comparison to God who's able to do anything but fail. Not, not, for, not in comparison to God that, that gave his very best, that gave his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. Nay, in all of those things, God makes us more than conquerors. Makes us more, so that means that doubt and depression it, it that sh doesn't have the authority to have reign over us. It's a part of those things that uh, that that's trying to separate us from experience the full love of God. And what we got to tell us those things: no death, no, I, I don't need you today. No doubt, I don't need you today. No depression, I don't have no room for you today. Fear, I, I don't have no time for you today. Fear, you got to go somewhere because you're not greater than my God. You may be strong, but you're still not greater and more powerful than my God. You got to understand that your mouth, there's power in your mouth. There's power of healing. In your mouth. There's power of deliverance in your tongue. There's power of breakthrough. Stop talking about you broke. Stop talking about you sick. Stop talking about uh, you, that you're depressed. You got to bind that devil and tell devil, you got to go. I got authority and I speak the authority according to the power that works in me because greater is he that's in me, y'all. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So everything that's else that's in the world can't compare to the God that I serve. He can't, they can't compare. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than, not just conquerors. We're not just getting by, but we're more than. We're exponential. We're enhanced. We're peculiar. We're royal. It takes us back to that. We're somebody special because we belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, Minister Meeks. Give me Philippians 4, 4 and 11. Philippians 4 and 4. Rejoice. In the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Uh, Philippians 4 and 11. Yes, sir. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith 
to be content. Can then we go back to Romans? So Romans 8 talks about things that distract. Tribulation distracts. Distress distracts. Persecution distracts. Famine, nakedness, peril, sword, those things distract. But you have a choice on whether you're going to allow them to continue to keep you distracted or bound or not. They are not greater than the God that worked inside of you. So you either can choose to allow them to do what they do or you can choose to allow God to do what he do. Then in Philippians 4, it tells me that I need to rejoice. Rejoice. Sickness in my body. Rejoice. Trouble in my marriage. Rejoice. Children acting up. Re rejoice. No matter what it may be, he says later on in verse 11, it's not that I want, but I understand that no, what, no that I've learned this. He says, in whatsoever state I find myself in, I need to be content, meaning I'm satisfied because I know who my Redeemer is. I'm content. When you're content, that means that you, that you can run on and see what the end is going to be because you know that you have no fear. You know that you have no fret. I said this before in different instances. My children are always content. And I use this in a different way. I always challenge my children to trust me to do anything for them. All right. And so I would have my children jumping off like the fifth or sixth step from on a staircase. Come on, let's roll. Jump. Let's go. You know, dad got you. But I, I didn't start them off on a six. We started off on two. They trusted dad on two. We moved down to four, up to four. We trust dad. They were content because they knew if they flew that dad was going to catch them. That's how it is that we got to be with God. No matter what may be going on, God, I trust you. So I'm going to take the leap. I'm going to take the leap of faith because I know that you will not fail me. And I know that you will not allow me to go into any harm. That, again, does not mean that we won't go through trials, we won't go through afflictions, but he only allows to come on us what we can bear. That works in tribulations, and that also works in blessings as well. He will only, we like to, we like to only talk about that scripture when it comes to bless, I mean, to um, persecution. But God ain't going to give you what you desire. If you can't handle it, he ain't only going to put on you more than, I mean, he's not going to put no more on you than you can bear or you can handle. That's favor. That's trials and tribulations. But then I go back into that because in Job, he considered Job. He considered Job. The enemy had to come to God and ask God for permission to afflict Job. So you can find yourself to be content because you know that the enemy could not have come upon you without God knowing about it first. He knew what was going to go on. And he allowed the devil to afflict you. But anytime God allows the afflictions to come, he's preparing you for something greater. The greater the trials, the greater the reward. The greater the affliction, the greater the elevation. The greater the heartache, the greater the growth. It, it's a process that God wants to produce in you a great fruit. We're here to bear fruit. Fruit that's not, being, that's not going under different trials and afflictions don't grow. They stay there. They get, they get there and they get wilted. They got to hang. They got to go through. They got to be buried, whatever it might be. But the greater the work, the better the results that come out of it. So sometimes you all don't, don't complain about the things that you think that are there to kill you. They're only there to make you strong. And the only thing, they're only there to produce the best of you. Look at God and say, God, what is it that you're trying to produce in me? And God, have your way and help me to produce what you want me to produce. Trials come to make you strong. Write down James 1. James said, count it all joy, verse 2, when you fall into diverse temptations. He said, count it joy. He said, because that means God is working something on your behalf. And if God is working something on your behalf, that means that God is doing something that's going to bring life to you. Sometimes you got to lose some things, but God's working it together for your good. All right? It's working together for your good. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I done got stuck and got to run on now and see what the end is going to be. So the next point, to receive God's blessings, we've got to trust him. Um, let me go in here. All right. 
verses three and four. Put not your trust in princes. Who are your princes? You ain't got to tell me. Who, you, who, who, who do you trust more than you trust God? When things are acting up on your job, did you go to God first or do you go to the boss? When your money is acting strange and you need some help, do you go to God first or do you go to your mom and your, your daddy, your brother, your sister, somebody else? That, that who, who, who bails you out? Do you trust God and make God your priority or do you allow man to be your savior? We allow princes to be people, men, women who only have limited capacities. We allow them to be the ones that we depend upon, but we don't trust in the God that says you ain't got to worry about what you got to wear. Don't worry about what's going to be on your table. I take care of the lilies of the field. I take care of the fowls of the air. And if I take care of things that are not made in my image, won't I do so much more for you? We can't allow princes and people to be our gods because when we allow them to be the ones that we lean upon and depend upon, then that means that our hope is in them instead of our hope being in God. He says, don't put your, your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. He can't help you. Not the way that God can help you. He only can give you a temporal solution when God can give you a, a, an eternal solution to a problem. Verse 4, he says, his breath goeth forth. Talking about man. He returned it to earth. He's going, he came from dust. And guess what, you all? That man's going to return back unto dust. They only can go and return to where they came from. He says that in the day that he perishes, guess what? His breath, his words that you've been leaning on are going to go there as well. We got to learn how to put our trust in the Lord. Come on, look at uh, Matthew 6, 19 and 21. Uh, Sister Pyle, can you read? Go to Matthew 6, 19 and 21. Uh, Mother Green gets Psalm 50 and 15. Mother McCowan gets Psalm 118 and 8. Sister Lewis get Jeremiah 17, 5 and 6. Minister Meeks, have I given you one? Give me Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, 26. So Sister Powell is going to Powell is going to give me Matthew 6, 19 to 21. I believe Mother Green is giving me Psalm 50 and 15. Mother McCown is giving me Psalm 118 and 8. Sister Lewis is giving me Jeremiah 17, 5 and 6. And then Minister Meeks is giving me Proverbs 28 and 26. Come on, read, as Bishop Thomas would always say. Matthew 6 and 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Who is, what's your most important, I mean, what's, what's your treasure? Is your treasure your finances? Is your treasure your bank account? Is your treasure your home? Is your treasure your spouse? Is your treasure your children? Is your treasure your TV time? What do you do? Who's your priority? There we go. That's what I'm trying to get to. That's the same book. In Matthew 6, that tells you, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, God is the most righteous thing that you should hunger and thirst after. So who do you put your trust in? Do you put your trust in men and, and material things where, where moth and rust comes in and destroys and men come and steal? Or do you put your, one in the, uh, put your trust in the one that, that no one can steal from? No one can defeat him. No one can turn, uh, uh, to turn him around. No one can confuse him. Do you put your trust in God? Come on, uh, Mother Green, give me Psalm 50 and 15. Psalm 50 and 15. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. All right, so he said, if you call upon me in your times of trouble, then what you're going to do is you're going to end up praising me because I'm going to do something that's blow your mind. I'm going to do something that you, that you, that's just going to simply amaze you. 
because you trusted me in the time of trouble. All right. If you don't trust God, then you can't expect him to come and, and, and rescue you. But I also want to make note is that you shouldn't you shouldn't only call God in your times of trouble. You should call God at all times. He should be your priority at all times, not just when you need a lifeline. Throw out the lifeline. No, praise him without having them to throw out the lifeline. Praise him at all times. Allow his praises to continually be in your mouth. All right? Come on, Mother McCall. Give me Psalm 118 and 8. 18 and 8 is dead. 118. Wait, wait. Is that 118 and 8? Yes. Okay, go ahead. All right, that that that's that's pretty plain and simple, right? I mean, I that you don't you don't need to add live on that or, or explain that anymore. It's better to trust in the Lord than to trust in man. And 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 those people spoke from exact experience. Why is it, y'all, that we have this big beautiful book of all the trials and the tribulations that people then went through? There's nothing that you have experienced. Someone needs to mute their phone. I mean, that, that, that thing. There's nothing that 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 has not already occurred in the Bible that God has already given an answer for. We, we have a blueprint. These people were writing the blueprint, living the blueprint. But we have the final blueprint of life that gives us the victory over every single obstacle that comes our way. And we don't read this enough. We don't spend enough time in this. We don't spend enough time meditating on this. I'm not trying to put you down, but what I want to encourage you, and, and the psalm writer is trying to encourage us, is that we should praise God. And, and it tells us the reason why we should praise God. Because God kept his promise to uh, Abraham. We should praise God. Because God had a plan for Joseph, that even though his brothers meant evil for him, God worked it together for his good. That means that we should praise God. Moses, he killed somebody. He had a stuttering issue, but God did great things in the life of Moses. We should Bless the God of our salvation. Moses went up onto the mountain. I'm just talking about the reasons why we should bless him, and we find it in the Bible. Moses went up on the mountain and came down, and the people were worshiping a cow. But in the midst of their sin, God still had mercy upon them. I should bless God because God gave me a second chance. And I don't know about you all, but God didn't just give me a second chance, but God gave me a third, a fourth, a hundred, a five hundred. He gave me chance after chance. I should bless him because he a God of a second chance. Why should I bless him? When when I was a dung, uh, when I was dung uh, on the dung hill and, and a brand for the fire, God saw something in me, and God said I was a jewel and I was going to be something great. And He picked me up in the midst of the muck and the miry, and He placed my feet on solid ground. I should bless Him because He didn't leave me in the trash heap. He didn't leave me on the dung hill, but He gave me another chance to bless Him, another chance to proclaim His great name. He blessed me to be able to be a blessing to others. I got a right to bless Him, and I got a reason to bless His holy. In his righteous name. Do I need to go further? I can keep going. There's so many things that we find in the Bible of why we should bless him. Even in the midst of captivity, y'all. In Jeremiah 29. I talk about that a lot because that's the, the blessing that I spoke upon the people of God here at Praise Center. That as we were going through the pandemic, I told God, I told them that God told us to build. God told us to marry. God told us to live. And that's what he tells them in Jeremiah 29. He tells them that even though you're in captivity, we're in captivity. He said, but I want you to grow in your captivity. I want you to expand in your captivity. I want you to plant seeds so that you can get harvest uh, after this captivity is over. He said, because I want to prepare you now to come out greater than you were when you came in. God is trying to prepare some of us now so that we'll be greater than we were when we came in. The worst thing you can do is start at the one point and end up at the same point. And that's what the children of Israel kept doing over and over again when they were wandering in the wilderness. God was ready, ready to send them into the promised land, but they kept circling around uh, uh, the mountain for 40 years. How in the world are y'all getting lost circling around the same mountain? It should have been simple for you to go the way, but every time God tried to take them, he, oh no, God, we feel like we grasshoppers uh, and, and they look like giants to us. And you come up with all these types of excuses, but God wants us to live now. God wants us to prepare for growth now. 
God wants us to trust him now so that when he brings us out of this pandemic, he brings us out of this thing that we'll be positioned to grow, that we'll be positioned to excel. We want to have everything that we need. So when the opportunity comes, we'll have the resources that we need. God has sent some blessings our way that we're starting to clear up credit. I think I told my sister, I think I told her this last year. I don't know if I told her this year or, or, or this year or last year, but I told her we're we going to get our debt down this year. And the pandemic came and there's no way on God's earth you can get your debt down when, when, when money is funny and change is strange. But God has been giving me the ability to cut off some things and clear out some things because he's preparing me for when we get out that we'll have all the resources that we need to get and attain what God has for us. Don't miss out, you all. And it all occurs because I trust God with not just my type, but with my offering as well. And I trust God that God's going to build and multiply even while all around me may be decaying and being destroyed. You got to make up in your mind what you want from God and chase after that you want from God. Come on, uh, Sister Lewis, give me Jeremiah 17, 5 and 6. the nourishment. You're not going to find the victory. You're not going to find the, oh, the breakthrough. You're not going to find what you need because you can't find it in man. You can't find it in things that are temporal. You can't find it in things that are not eternal. You got to put your trust in God and put your focus in on God. And the salt land, the salt land kills everything that's around it because salt dries. Salt takes away nutrients. In, in a desert, y'all, I need something. I need some, I need some nourishment in the desert. All right. But you all gotta remember that if you trust God, he said, I will send, help me, Holy Ghost, give it to me. I know where it's at. Go with me to Isaiah 43. I believe it's Isaiah 43. Yes. That's not the one I want, but go there anyway. I know I'm close to it. Ah, I might. I just didn't go down further. Okay, look at this, you all. When you trust God, in Isaiah 43, go to verse number two. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. But you're only going to get that if you trust him. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. But you only get that if you trust God. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Those are promises of those that trust God. Skip down to verse 19. Skip down to verse 18 first. It says, remember ye not, Isaiah 43 and 18, Remember ye not the former things. Stop worrying about those things that you've been through. Stop worrying about those things that caused you harm. Stop worrying about those things that caused you to be lackadaisical now. You've got the, the right mind. God has opened up your eyes today or opened up your eyes now. That if you praise me, I'll come in and change and shift your atmosphere. So stop worrying or considering the things of old. He says, I'm willing to do a new thing in the midst of you. And he says, won't you see it spring forth? Shall you not know it? He said, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. 
There are no ways in the wilderness because wilderness has trees upon trees. You've got to keep jumping back to and fro, bouncing from place to place in the wilderness just to get out. He says, I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. And not only will I make a way in the wilderness, I'm going to send water in the desert. How often do y'all, I'm an I'm a animal planet lover. And you, you rarely send waters. You rarely see waters running in the desert. But only God can send rivers in the desert. You see little puddles in the desert. And those puddles dry out. But a river don't dry out. It, it, it would be called a stream. It would be called some temporary. But a river is something that will breathe life in the midst of the decay that's all around you. I speak light into you right now. Everyone that's under the sound of my voice. I speak rivers upon you even now. I speak flow. Yes, I know you got some desert situations around you. But I speak rivers flowing your way. I see rivers flowing your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then that means that life comes when you're planted by the rivers of water. You may be planted in a desert. But if you're next to a river, it's going to breathe life into you. God says, I'm willing to send rivers your way if you would just only trust me. Come on, minister, because I'm getting excited. I got to get up out of here. Give me Proverbs 28 and 26. Proverbs 28 and 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. All right, then Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding in all of your ways. Not just some, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall. Not he might or he's going to think about it, but he shall direct your paths. It's a guarantee. When you make God your priority, that God's going to bless you above and beyond what you can ever ask or think. That is the exceeding abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. But those things come when you trust in the Lord. All right. It comes when you trust in the Lord. Doubt doesn't give you access to those. Fear does not give you access to those blessings. The rivers, I want you all to say rivers, with rivers. I want you to write down on your paper, rivers. I'm looking for rivers, and I see rivers flowing all throughout your life. I see rivers even now. God, let the rivers flow. Let the rivers flow in the name of Jesus. Send forth life, God, in the name of Jesus. What the devil thought for, meant for evil, God, you're working it together for our good because you're about to send rivers our way in the name name of Jesus. I did that for you, Mother Washington, because I saw you write down rivers. She posted rivers on the Facebook chat. Rivers. I, I, I see rivers of living water springing up and welling up down inside of us, and they're going to breathe new life into us and breathe life into those that are all around us. Don't hoard your river. You better let somebody else come and drink from your river. Don't be stingy with your river because the more you bless other people with what God blesses you with, God's going to bless you even the more. Because when we take care of those that are least among us, then God can't help but to give us room and make room for us to be a blessing even the more. Rivers, rivers of living water. That's what God's going to do inside in, in, in our lives. Rivers of living water. So look at this. As we go into the conclusion of the chapter, verses 5 through 10 shows us the results of trusting and praising God. When God is our help and our hope, then we'll be blessed. Let's look at the scripture. Verse number 5, it says, happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. So if you know who your Redeemer is... If you know who your strong tower is, if you know who the wheel in the middle of the wheel is, if you know who your provider is, if you know who your strong tower is, whatever it is that you need, if you know that God is that and more, then the scripture says you should be happy. You can't be walking around fretful and fearful if you serve the God that can make ways out of no way. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God. That means that takes me back to what I told you all before. you got to make up in your mind how you're going to be. You can either be down, trodden, or forsaken. You can be cast down and let those things come up against you and cause you to uh, be fretful. Um, but I, I want to be like uh, what Paul told the church at Corinth. 
in uh help me holy ghost get there get there get there i'm right there i'm right down i'm right there i'm right there I know I'm right there. Hold on. Give me this. Let me get this. There we go. I was right. All right. 2 Corinthians 4 and 9, 4 and 8, 4 and 7. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels talking about us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels talking about the spirit of God. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. God allows us to go through things in life so that we can understand it's not us that's doing it, but it's God that's working things together for our good. It says in verse 8, they made up in their mind. It says, we may be troubled, but I'm not distressed. Yeah, I mean, I, that's, that, you got to make up in your mind that, yeah, trouble may be here, but I'm not in distress. I'm not in despair. Uh, we are perplexed. I'm not on the stand, but I'm not in despair. So you have to make up in your mind what you're going to believe and whose report you're going to believe. St. Tavon said, whose report are you going to believe? They all declare, we shall believe the report of the Lord. You've got to believe what God has said. And when you make up in your mind that you believe what God has said, you're going to always counteract negativity with the promises of God. You can't do it with material things, but what you got to do is you got to counteract those things with the promises of God. I am healed by the wound in this side. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the head and not the tail. You've got to be able to speak the word of God into your situation. So happy is the man whose trust or whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. And you can be happy because look at verse 6, because he's the one that made heaven. He get, so they give us reasons of why we should be happy. He's the God who made heaven and earth. Oh, there you go. Look at my list. I was about to go through another list. Look at the list that's on the screen. We can be happy and pleased with God and we can trust God because he's the creator. Verse 6a says he's the creator. Verse 6b says he's faithful. Uh, it says uh, he's the one that made heaven and earth and the sea and all that there is in, therein. He says which keepeth true forever. Meaning that if he does it consistently forever, his faithful is everlasting. His faithfulness is everlasting. That's what Jeremiah was able to hold on to in Lamentations 3 and 23. When he recalled who God was, he said, oh, I don't have to be downtrodden in despair. God is the one that's faithful. God is the one that makes ways out of no way. So I'm, I'm remembering the faithfulness of God. And when I remember the faithfulness of God, it should cause me to bless him. Let's keep going. Not only if I trust in him, it says, but I can delight, but I can trust God and praise God because God delights in blessing me. Look at verse seven through nine. It says, which executed judgment for the oppressed. You ain't got to fight for yourself. God will fight for you, which giveth food to the hungry. My, but my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches up in glory. Uh, verse number eight. No, let me keep going. Verse 7, the, the Lord looseth the prisoners. He re, re, it, it, ah, Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. He's free indeed. We talked about that on Sunday. Free. Freedom. I'm free. I'm free. I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. I'm no longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is, is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God I am free. He looseth the prisoners releases them. Verse 8, it says, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. So when I can't see, God will let me see something that nobody else can see. God, a blessing that's waiting for me, just for me, that no one else can see. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. God can straighten you up. God can breathe new light into you. Those old broken bones, God can heal them and make you stronger than you've been ever before. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. So God delights in blessing us. Keep going. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. So he won't allow the wicked to prosper either. He sustains those that trust him and he curses those 
that don't have faith in him. Praise plus trust equals blessings. When we praise God and we tell God that we trust him and we show God that we trust him, God blesses us above and beyond what we can ever ask or think of. Praise. God will bless us when we praise him. God will bless us when we trust him. And then last but not least, verse 10 says this, The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. He will reign forever. So he's worthy to be praised and adored because his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure through all generations. That takes me to Psalm 118, where it just talks about his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure through all generations. We serve a God that reigns uh, forever and forever. And we can count on him to come through for us and make ways out of no way. All right, let's go through these questions. Any questions before I go over the questions from um, the Bible study lesson? Any questions? So I didn't hear the question, but I had uh, a comment to make on when you began and you asked the questions about um, praise, praising. And it, it took me to... Um, Exodus 15, verse 2. Exodus 15, verse 2, and it says, The Lord is my strength and song. And I know everybody had this one say song, one say hallelujah. But then the scripture came to me. The Lord is my strength and song. He is become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation, my father's God. And I will exalt him. So that's what I was thinking when we talk about um, what is praise? What does praise mean to you? Or I think that was the question you asked. And I thought about Thanksgiving. Giving thanks always when you talk about how do you praise him. I can't remember how you phrase the question. But that, that was the scripture that came to mind. Exodus 15 verse 2. And that's good because I like in there it says, I will prepare him an habitation. By the Bible tells us in Corinthians, know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? He tells us that he that he wants to abide in the temple. And we are not our own. So we invite him in because he's standing at the door and he's knocking. He wants to come in. He wants to have his way. So we should make a, a God our, our praise, a habitation for God to be able to dwell in. All right, any other comments, any other questions? All right, let's go over these questions real quick. Question number one, it says, why and how should we praise God? This is a rhetorical question. We talked about different ways to be able to praise God. But why should we praise him? Everybody give me a reason why we should praise him. Uh, Mother McCown, give me a reason why we should praise God. Because he's been so good to us. All right, come on, Sister Lewis, you ready? Give me a reason why, because you've been going in, you got your camera real back so you can go in by yourself, but I've been paying attention to everybody. <laughs> go ahead, sis. Why should we why should we praise God? Because he created us to praise him. Good, good. Come on, Minister Meeks. He obeyed. Oh, wait, wait, wait. okay. To him. Go ahead, say the last part, Sister Lewis. He he wants us to obey him. Good. He it's a commandment yes. to praise him. Good. It, it, it's not a it's not a request. He's he's doing it genuinely because when God when we praise Him, He blesses us, and when we choose not to praise Him, He cannot bless us. So He makes the request and the demand, and we can choose whether we obey it or not. I use this as an example. I told my kids back in the day. I said, "You can choose to obey me, or you can choose not to obey me. But you got to be ready to deal with the consequences of not obeying me. So there's some consequences to you not obeying." All right. So that's what God is. God gives you an opportunity. He says you can choose me or you choose not to choose me, but you got to deal with the consequences of your choice. All right. Come on, Minister Meeks. Why should we praise God? Because his mercies endure forever. All right. You're going to keep stealing my Psalm 118. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Come on, Sister Graham. You there? I don't know if you're there, Sister Pyle. Why should we praise God? Oh, there you go. Come on, Sister Graham. Why should we praise God? Good. 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 Sister Pio, why should we pray God? Praise God. Because we know that He loves us so much. Good. Good. 
Like none other. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's good. Missionary Miller, can you talk? Can you get in and give us why we should praise? Because he is God. Because he is God alone. Good. Mother um, Washington says we owe God a praise for the things he does for us. And she didn't say done. She said the things he does. So that's real time. I should bless God just because what he's doing for me right now. Uh, Brother Graham said uh, he inhabits our praises. They, he inhabits the praises of his people. So that's why we should praise him because he comes in and rests among us. Brother Pyle says because he is Lord. And he put an exclamation point at the end. That's why we should praise him. So we have many reasons why we should praise him. All right, let's go to question number two. The psalmist speaks about trusting in princes. Princes represent material things. Princes represent uh, uh, things of this world. And the question is, why would he warn us against trusting in man? What happens to things of this world? What do they do? I gave you a scripture in, in Matthew 6. Uh, what happens to things in this world? Y'all remember? What eats? What, they, they, they do die, but I'm looking for the words. It says where... Yeah. What's that? Um, no, I'm not looking for death. What thing? What what happened to things of this world from Matthew six? I'm gonna give you guys a, a chance to go to it. Things of this world are temporal, aren't they? They are temporal, but he tells us why they are temporal. What happens to those temporal things? What happens to temporal things? To, what, go ahead, say it, mother. Yeah, moth moth eats them up. Rust destroys them, all right? And what else? I'm missing one more. What else happens to those things that are, that are in this world? We got the moth that eats them up. The rust destroys it. What else? I'm missing one. Brother Johnson, they don't, they do fade away, but I'm looking for what it says in Matthew 6. There you go. The thieves come in and steal. So they, we try to hide stuff and hoard stuff and put stuff up. And moth is going because it's got to return back under dust. So the moth eat it up. The rust destroys it. And then the thieves steal it. Yes, that's the one I was looking for. And yes, Brother Johnson, they do fade away as well. And then Sister Moulton said, going back to the question of why we should praise him, is because his, he is merciful to us. Yes, that's excellent. That's excellent. All right, let's go to the next question. What are the ways... The psalmist describes God in verse 6 through 7. He's, give me a way. Everybody give me a way. Go to Psalm 6 through 7. What, what are the ways that, that God, that he describes God, that God does? He's a creator. Yep, Mr. Aaron Miller said creator. Uh, come on, Sister Powell, give, Powell, give me the next one. Psalm 146, 6 and 7. Okay, come on, Sister Graham. You ready? Nope, not Sister Graham. Not ready. What What are the ways of God? He's the Creator. What else? He's an executioner. He is. That's in there. Okay, that's good. That's a part of that. Yep. Come on, somebody else. Sister Lewis, look like you're unmuted. He's a provider. He's He's a provider. Good. Okay, keep going. Mother McCown, you found something in there? It's righteous. It's yeah. justice. It's truth. It's empathy. It's freedom. Girl, I don't want you to give me all those missionary medals. I want everybody to participate. Stop being a stop being a horde. Stop hoarding all the all the answers. Come on, Mother McCown, give me one. He gives food to the to the hungry. Good. Yes, he does. Minister Meeks, did you give me one already? Go into verse eight. Give me one from verse eight. He's a, a opener of the, uh, of the eyes. All right, so those are the, the way. Yes, yeah, he's, a, he's the master optometrist. Yeah, he's a master physician. All right, and so these are the ways of God. I could have went through verse 8 and verse 9 as well because he preserves, he relieves, he, uh, he, he, he's an executioner, as someone said. He, he, he does judgment. Uh, God does, he gives food to the hungry, I see on here. Uh, he made heaven and earth. Yes, 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 yes. All right, that's what God does. Those are his ways. All right? Uh, and then the next question, what type of people does God help? He helps those that are weak. He helps those that are blind. He helps those that are in prison. He helps those that are oppressed. 
He helps those that are hungry. He helps those that are righteous. So you don't have to have all negative things going on in your life. God helps even the righteous as well. He preserves the strangers, the fatherless and the, the, fatherless and the widows, and he takes care of those that are wicked. So God helps and touches all those people. All right? So what should you get out of today's lesson? I got to praise the Lord. I should make him my priority. I should make him my enemy. And when I do that, God has to fill the things in between. And if I got my mind on him in the, in the beginning and have my mind on him during the daytime, then that means God can keep me. He can sustain me. He'll keep me in peace. He'll do the things that I need for him to do so that he will get the glory out of my life. All right? Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. We're going to go through various different songs. I have not cheated and gone ahead yet. Um... Uh, but we're going to go through these songs because these are the psalms of someone's heart. One of these may apply to you. One of these may be your song. But as you grab them and you hold, uphold them, understand that all of the psalms should lead you to praise God. If you all remember when we talked about Jonah, we were on Jonah because Jonah's psalm didn't lead him to praise God. He acknowledged who God was. He acknowledges he is sovereign, but it didn't lead him to repent, to repent and praise God. A psalm should lead you to worship and magnify the God of your salvation. So when you go through the different trials and the things that come your way, um, we should make sure that it leads us to worship, not leading us to fret, not leading us to fear. Um, Brother Green said he is the fruit of the spirit. Yes, that is who he is. He is the one that provides and meets needs. Good. Thank you, sir. But we should make praise our answer. Instead of complaining, instead of worrying, instead of fretting, instead of fearing, praise should be our answer to things that come our way. Why should we praise him? Why should we magnify him? Why should we glorify him? Because he's righteous. He's worthy, it's comely, he, provide, he provides blessings, praise is a choice. You can choose to praise God or you can choose to sit idle. Too often we see people sitting around while somebody else is entertaining them and they're not getting in the worship for themselves. But praise is comely for the upright because God, that praise is what we tell God is that I trust you for any, any, any and everything. When we trust him, he blesses us. When we trust him, he adds things unto us. We don't, he don't want us trusting in man. He don't want us leaning uh, and depending upon man. But in, in all of our ways, he wants us to trust him and acknowledge him so that he can direct our pathways. The results of us praising and trusting God is that we are blessed. We'll be blessed in the city. We'll be blessed in the field. And then I'm going to go right back to it again. God will send rivers your way when you praise and trust God for everything. All right. And then Brother Johnson said he is just too good to me for me not to tell him thank you. And you all saw when I saw when I began to worship and thank God, I can not help but to contain. I couldn't contain myself because worship shifts your atmosphere. It takes away and allows the and takes away the things that are un, not of God. It takes them away and get your mind focused in on the one who's able to do anything but fail. All right. So he comes in and makes ways out of no way. All right. So next week, we will not have a lesson next week. So ignore that. That's a typo. We actually will not have a lesson the next two weeks. Let me all tell you all that. We won't have a lesson on the 9th or the 16th. The next Bible study we'll have will be on the 23rd. The reason we won't have one next Wednesday because we will be in our Holy Convocation we'll, and we'll be broadcasting the Holy Convocation on our Facebook Live page. We'll share it on there and put a watch party on there. So join us on Facebook Live for our 106th Holy Convocation. Then the following week, we'll be in revival with Overseer Gabriel Hatcher. He'll be here at Praise Center. So for those of Praise Center, you all can come to the church if you desire. We'll be sitting in spacing, so we won't have Bible study, but we will have our revival. He'll be opening up a revival on the 16th, 17th, and the 18th, those three days. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. 
So we won't have Bible study over the next two weeks, but we will still have service. So join us as we continue to magnify God and we continue to worship him. I'm excited about the revival. Uh, Overseer Hatcher blessed us last year when he came. And so I want you to join us and be encouraged by that great man of God. It'll be straightforward. Uh, we'll get him up at, I believe at 7. We'll pray from 7 to 7.30. We'll get him on with a song. Turn the mic over to him around 7.35. And uh, he'll be good to go to bless us. All right? So I want you to be encouraged. Let's continue to chase after God. Let's continue to seek God's face. Let's continue to bless him because he's just been that good. And when we make praise our priority, then there's nothing that the devil can do to stop us from receiving what God has for us. All right? All hearts and minds clear? Any other questions? All right, Minister Meeks, can you close us out in prayer, please? Yes. Bow your heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great mercy and kindness, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this, this time that we share to learn about your word, God. Lord God, to, to know that we, we should always praise you, God, and that we should always lift you up in times of sorrow, in times of good, in times of bad, but to give you praise. Why, Lord? Because you are a great God. Yes, you are. And yes, we Lord. thank you, God. Yes, we thank Lord. you for this word. We thank you for the teacher, our pastor, God. We thank you. We restore back into him in the name of Jesus, Lord. Continue to bless him. And bless all the people under the sound of my voice, yes, Heavenly Lord. Father. Thank Continue you, to just use us for the furtherance of your service, God. Yes, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. Yes, and we thank you for your, what you're doing right now. Yes, Lord. Continue to keep us. Yes, we'll Lord. be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Yes, In your mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, these blessings we ask. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God blessing. Blessings to you all. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you on Friday. Join us on Friday for prayer. God bless you.